I wanted to refresh this blues jam lesson for you. It's one of my favorites. So grab your sax, let's get stuck in, and I'll catch you after the jam where I've got an extra tip for you. So on the tenor saxophone, we're gonna use the note B flat, and there's a few different ways you can play that, but I'm gonna use my index finger, my left hand nose picker on this key, and I'm gonna also stick down this key. So that gives you the note B flat. You could also play it one, two, and the bottom side key down here. Uh, that's the other way to do it, but this is just as easy. It sounds like this. Now for alto players, we're gonna use the note F. So that's dead easy, one, two, three, and our first finger down here, okay? Now it's important to remember as we're going through this jam that we can use those notes in the bottom register, but we can also add our octave key here to put that note up in that upper register. So as we go through the jam, have a listen to what I'm doing, and if you think you'd like to do the high version, just add the octave key on the back of your sax. Okay, let's get stuck in with our first jam. I'm gonna use my tenor sax, but you can play along with me on whatever sax you like. The way we're gonna do it is I'll start the track off, I'll play two bars, just using that one note that we've just learned and really simple rhythms. The most important thing here is that we're trying to listen to the band and play a rhythm that's simple and locked in and you know, it's groovy. That's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to dance to what we're playing. So I'll do that for two bars, then it'll be your turn for two bars, back to me for two bars, and back to you and so forth as we go through a couple of choruses of this blues. Are you ready? Grab your sax, let's go. Brilliant, how'd you get on with that? It's good fun, right? Now don't get too hung up trying to play exactly what I'm playing. What I really want you to do is just listen to what I'm playing and use that as inspiration so you can make up your own notes. So what I don't want is for you to send me a message and say, Nigel, can you just write me out all the notes that you're playing in this lesson? Because you're kind of missing the point if you do that. Okay, let's move on to jam number two. Now that we're gonna spice it up a little bit here and we're going to add in another note. So we're gonna use two notes. Now on the tenor saxophone, we're gonna use B flat that we used before, but we're gonna add in the second note, which is D flat. Now D flat sounds complicated, but it's really just no fingers at all. It's the same as C sharp, okay? So no fingers at all. So we've got B flat, and we've got C sharp, and of course we could add our octave key on and play those up the octave as well. So B flat sounds like this. And C sharp or D flat sounds like this. And up the octave. If you're on an E flat instrument like alto saxophone or barry saxophone, then we're gonna use the F that we mentioned before, but we're gonna add on A flat. So A flat is the same as G sharp, it's just three fingers and our little finger down here. So remember we can play those down the octave or add our octave key and play them up the octave. Okay, I'm gonna use my alto sax for the second jam, but you could join me on whatever sax you'd like to. We're gonna to stick to using just those two notes and also use really, really simple rhythms. <laughs> Thank you. 
making really great progress. I can't believe we've got through two jams already. We've got one more jam left to go. Just before we move on to that though, can you let me know in a comment if you like doing these sorts of jam style lessons? Just let me know in a comment down below if you've enjoyed these sort of things because it'll help me to know whether I should be making more of these. For the third jam, we're going to ramp it up and we're going to add two more notes. So we're going to have four notes in total. Now this is just a starting point, right? What we're trying to do is prove that we can make comfortably make nice sounding functioning solos over a blues progression. And once we get this right, then really the sky's the limit because we can just add in more notes and more rhythms and more complexity into it. But if we get these foundational things right, then we're off to a really good start and it'll help you to learn really quickly with your improvising. So here are the four notes that we're going to use on the alto saxophone. We already know about the F and the A flat. We're going to add on the B flat, so that's the first finger, the nose picker on the B and the B flat. And then we're also going to add in the B natural. Now, if you know about blues scales, these are the four, first four notes of a blues scale, but it doesn't really matter if you don't understand why we've chosen these notes. Let's just focus on how they sound and how they work in a melody. Okay, so one more time F, A flat, B flat, which we could also do like this if we wanted to, one, two on the side key, and then normal B. This is what they sound like down the octave and up the octave. For the tenor saxophone, we're going to add in an E flat and an E natural. So we've already got B flat. We've got D flat. That's the same as C sharp, no fingers. Then we're going to add in E, uh, e flat. What are you doing, Nigel? Same as D sharp. Okay, so. One, I've got my octave key on, I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, and this little key down here, okay? That's my D sharp or my E flat key. And then I'm also going to add in E natural, which is just one, two, three, and one, two, with my octave key on. So one more time, B flat, D flat, E flat, and E natural, okay? A bit harder for us to play this up the octave unless you're familiar with your palm keys up here. I might play some notes up there, but if you don't know about your palm key notes, don't worry about it. You can just play them in this register. This is what they sound like. Now I'm going to use those four notes and again, we're going to do two bars each, but I'm going to try and make up some interesting lines using those four notes. We'll start off by just playing the four notes plain as day so we can hear what they sound like and then I'll start mixing it up and seeing if we can create some interesting melody lines. Now remember, you don't have to play exactly what I'm playing, just listen to what I'm doing and use that as inspiration to make your own killer lines. Here we go.
How'd you get on with that? Isn't it great fun doing those sort of jam sessions? You know we do loads of those type of lessons and a whole lot more inside Sax School Pro with our thousands of members. And the reason is, it helps so much to get you to be more confident as a player and really start to build the skills that you need so you can go out and start playing at jam sessions, playing for friends, joining a band, all that kind of stuff. Now, I promised you a tip and I've got that for you in a sec, but first of all, don't forget to grab the backing track and the PDF for this lesson. It's in the locker, there's a link down below, that's where we keep all of our free stuff. There's tons to keep you busy in there. So here's the tip for you. Now we spoke a lot in today's lesson about keeping things simple, but you know what? You can supercharge your blues solos by taking that up to a whole nother level. And if you listen to great players like Lee Allen or Red Prysock, they really dig into the idea of keeping their solos simple, but they improve it by adding loads of energy. So they really emphasize their notes, think about digging into a rhythm, and then they'll repeat one note over and over and over to build up energy and excitement. This is a really simple technique. People don't talk about it very much, but it helps to make your solos connect with your audience so much better. So give that a go. Hey, there's so many other ways you can improve your blues solos. In fact, check out this video next where you'll learn three fantastic tactics that you can put into action right away.